Hello and welcome to AC Sisterhood Speaks, Alliance. I'm your host, Six Keys, joined by my co-host, Lorena. Hey everyone! And in this Alliance episode, our guest is one of the team members behind one of the biggest and most well-known Assassin's Creed fan sites, Axis the Animus. Welcome, Sari. Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Sari and the rest of her ATA team work hard, often behind the scenes, so we're excited to get to know more about you and your contributions. Well, thank you very much. As I told you before, I'm a bit embarrassed because I'm not used to be the one do the talking, so uh, and I'm not used to talk about me, so <laughs> a bit nervous about it, but I'm sure it's going to be it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> First of all, thanks so much, Sari, for joining us. I know it's it's unusual for you, so we're really delighted to have you here. Uh, I was wondering, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your life outside of Axis the Animus? What is your daytime job, for example? And do you have any hobbies besides running this giant fan site? <laughs> so I am, a, in my daily life, I'm a vet. So I work uh, mostly with dogs and cats. Uh, and I'm uh, specialized in anesthesia and first aid, uh, so in emergency care. Uh, so let's say that most of my job is dedicated to, uh, most of my day is dedicated to my job, uh, which sometimes it's a bit uh, heavy, <laughs> but still satisfying. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have a let's say that access the annual takes away a lot of time of free time <laughs> when i'm home but when i have sometimes i love to go walking with my dog uh, which is getting a bit old so i try to enjoy her as much as i can and uh, yeah i think that that summarized my life pretty much <laughs> yeah that's a pretty serious career <laughs> important question what is the name of your dog my dog is dasha well, she has a very uh, uh, way more complicated name because she comes from Lithuania or somewhere there. It should be like Dear Dashko Babalandis, uh, but wow. we just call her Dasha, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would be a bit too complicated every time. Dear Dashko Babalandis, please come here. No, so it's Dasha. <laughs> That's really cute. Thank you for sharing that. Have you always been a gamer? Uh, and what has been your experience as a woman in the gaming community? So I've been a gamer, yeah, since I was very little. I have a bigger brother and he used to play a lot when I was a kid. Super Mario or stuff like that on the old NES. So uh, I started playing a lot of time ago and that makes me feel a lot old <laughs> but yeah when i grew up i kept playing by myself um, i also with the super nintendo i played a lot of games like uh, oh my god how was it called a game where you had to punch everyone with chun li and oh my god well, however, a lot of games uh, on the Super the Super Nintendo, and then still growing up, uh, I bought my first PS4, I think. Uh, it was a PS4. And uh, yeah, I became a fan of games like uh, Final Fantasy. I tried something on PC too, so I started to love Siberia, which gave me that feeling of riddle-solving moods that are still with me uh, and that is something that I still love also in AC games. And then Prince of Persia came and it, it's one of the reasons why I fell in love with this, with Assassin's Creed 2. So uh, yeah, I, I think I've been a gamer for almost my whole life. Um, about the part of being a female gamer, uh, I think I, I didn't have um, the the gaming world has always been a lot male focused, so I've always uh, seen a lot of male playing. My brother, for example, as I told you, and all my friends in the high school, they were all males. So uh, it has always I, I I have always felt it as a very masculine environment, but I I have never had any issues. If I can say, I, I never had any issues in uh, blending with the community of male people. I mean, they uh, maybe I've been lucky, but they've always 
made me feel welcome and it has always been a, a nice how can I say a nice experience to share with them my passion for video games I think that's great I, I think it's always nice to hear when the video game community is very accepting and just out of curiosity like it sounds like you were very surrounded by guys in this space how do you feel the community has changed over time well, I think it's changing mostly in the recent times. So it has been a male environment for a lot of time, but I'm starting to see a lot of females getting involved in the community. It's still much more uh, made up of, of men, for sure. We also see it in our statistics for the website and for YouTube or, or stuff like that. It's mainly male. But... We, we are seeing a bit more of females joining our community and participating in our activities. So I think it's slowly changing in that direction too because uh, I think video games are becoming more... They were... When I was a kid, they were considered just like games. Okay, so our parents mocked us because we spent a lot of time on games and uh, very childish stuff. Well, now I think that video, video games are turning into something more artistic in, in a way. So they, they are becoming appealing to a wider uh, group of people. So I think that's attracting a lot of women too to the community. So you already kind of mentioned this, but how did you get into Assassin's Creed? Like, what about that franchise spoke to you? Well, I told you I was a big fan of Prince of Persia, so that's, I think, the first and very important thing that attracted me um, for what concerns Assassin's Creed. I always tell everyone that asks me, I, I remember the first time we saw an, ad an advertisement on the TV for Assassin's Creed or at the, at the college, me and Marco, sorry, I'm saying we because <laughs> Marco and another admin of Access the Animus is my husband, so... We were, uh, we were studying together uh, and were living together. And uh, we saw this advertisement and we, we said like, oh my God, this is something we have to try. So yeah, uh, that's, that's one of the main things that attracted me to that. And then the fact that it was a game set in real history that was trying to give... Uh, to, to create a story in real history where I've always been very into history also at school when I was younger. So that gave me another reason to go and look for Assassin's Creed. And when we first played the game, and especially the second one with the glyphs and, and all like that, um, I told you before, I'm a big fan of Siberia, so I'm riddle solving stuff. So they just called me, the glyphs were just like... <laughs> This is the game for you, you know? <laughs> so did you start with the first game or did you get on board with the second one? No, no, the, fir the very first game. I didn't play it because I was watching Marco playing it. But yeah, I started with the first one. Then got hooked maybe with the second one. But yeah, started with the first one. So how did Access the Animus get started? And what was your role at the start? So Access of the Animus was started in 2013. We, Marco was um, participating in other communities, mostly Italian ones, but we wanted to have something together to be shared <laughs> because we wanted to share the experience also in that. So we decided to create something that was ours. Uh, so we decided to embark on this project. We had other for uh, friends that founded with us Access the Animus in, in 2013. And we started with this, with the idea of having a hub where we can put all the things Assassin's Creed, so news, lore, reviews, collectibles, everything that was about Assassin's Creed. And uh, yeah, we were six and we started as an Italian project only uh, because, well, we were, all of us were Italians. But then after some months, we started receiving uh, requests for translating our content and for translating our news because the, the fans wanted to know what we were writing and stuff like that. So we, we started creating our content in both English and Italian. And we called for our amazing Stefania, which is our main translator for 
uh, for all the things that go out in English together with Marco. And my role has always been to be the webmaster since the, since the beginning. So I take care of all the things that revolves around the website. Uh, but that's not the only thing. I mean, maybe at the beginning it was a bit more, um, we had more our roles. So there was the lore nerd, there was the webmaster, there was the newser, we, there were the artists and stuff like that. But with time going on, well, all our roles got a bit mixed up. So every one of us does a bit of everything. So I take care of the website. I take care sometimes of the social media, of video editing, so it's a bit more, so <laughs> it's not so fixed as it was at the beginning. And uh, yeah, this is how it started. And uh, it's unbelievable to me that nine years have already passed. It seems like yesterday we started, so yeah, I'm very proud of it. <laughs> yeah, you definitely deserve to be proud. One thing I've always been curious about is, uh, you said that you started as an Italian-only project, but then you started to move towards English as the site yeah. got bigger. I was always wondering, because you guys were on top of the news all the time back then, and still. How did you manage that? Like, did you have people from Ubisoft Italy helping you guys, or how...? <laughs> No, we, we never, no, we actually, we, we never had help from the subsidiaries. No, we had some help from the subsidiaries here in Italy, but not for what concerns the news or stuff like that. It was just, we had this, Marco is, is a lot involved in social media and stuff like that. So he has eyes everywhere, <laughs> let's say like that. And then at the beginning, we, we had one person that was just, focused on that so uh, it was called AJ23 then he left because he he focused on other stuff in his life so uh, we had this person that was just focused on that and uh, the the thing was that Twitter at the time was already famous but it was still very young and not a lot of people used it or knew it as they are now and we were already using it and we, I think we learned to use it pretty fast and use it for the news. So our news came from Twitter. We started to know the names of the developers. So we started following them. Uh, so yeah, the, the, the way we were on top of news, <laughs> thank you about that, um, was like this. We had one person that was focused on that and all the others helping, however. And, uh, and yeah, Twitter was a great help at the time. So it sounds like you guys were way ahead of the curve already back then. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we were also very lucky with the people we met. So the, the people that helped access the annuals to be where it is now and that are not participating in the project anymore were great people. So they helped the, the project a lot. I remember when I first came across like Access the Animus and the site was still only in Italian. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I do remember when you guys started to translate and I was like, yes, I can read it now. So <laughs> uh, big, big props to your staff. For, that's, that's a huge undertaking. I kind of jokingly tell Marcus every now and then that Stefania needs a vacation. I, I hope she gets this. Yeah, those. yeah. <laughs> she Stefania works so hard. Also be, yeah, also because... Now Marco is doing his lore analysis mostly on uh, videos, so it's a bit different. The, the website has taken a, a bit of a different point of view on the, on the franchise. Um, but back then, when he wrote all of his articles, they were like 15 pages of articles, and Stefania had to translate all of them. And some of them were about like quantum physics or stuff like that. It was so difficult to translate them correctly, not just translate them. So yes, yeah, Fania definitely needs <laughs> some holidays or however a statue or something. Stefania, the secret MVP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yes. But like, it, it does seem like Axis the Animus is a pretty big undertaking. How big is the team at the moment? At the moment, we are five, uh, which is Marco, Marcus, which um, we, could, we could say he's the one that gives the direction to the project. So he's 
managing all uh, the big stuff that goes on. We, I mean, it, we call him, he's, he's a bit like our CEO. <laughs> So yeah, Marco has his job. So he does all the videos, the video editing, the video scripting. Um, he manages the, the social media accounts. He oversees the translations when they're done. I mean, he's a bit over, all over the place, in a good way, of course, uh, even if he's my husband. Then it's me, uh, as I told you, the website, and sometimes I help with the translation, social media, and stuff like that. Then we have uh, our sources, which is our... <clears throat> she's also um, an expert in lore about Assassin's Creed, so she writes articles about theories, about... Um, about she's our main reviewer, so every time that something new about the franchise goes out, so like DLCs or the games or the transmedia, uh, she's the one reviewing them for us. Um, then we have Stefania, as we said, which is our main translator. And then we have Mathieu, uh, which is our collector specialist, as we call him, so he knows everything about uh, collection and uh, he's the one reporting all the news about new collectibles coming out and stuff like that. Now we have uh, Azu which is like a, an, I don't know how to define it because he helps us some, sometimes when we have like transmedias in French which is because he's French so he helps us out translating uh, from French and sometimes he helps us um, video editing because he's also very good at that. And that's it. We are five plus plus a zoo that gets uh, comes helping us when we are in need. That's that's really incredible, uh, and that must be like incredibly challenging too, because everyone's kind of picking up things here and there. How do you make sure everybody is always on the same page? It's I I'm be, I'm being honest. It's impossible. I mean, because not not because. Just because we are getting old and adult, and we have uh, our lives outside of the project so it's not always easy to have all the things that uh, go exactly as you plan them uh, so we struggle a lot sometimes because the the work we 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 want to to create the 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 job we want to do with access the animals is, a, is always a lot and sometimes we do we decide to create something and do not take into account that we have other stuff to do in real life. So, yeah, it's it's a lot challenging. The the good thing about the team is that we are very relaxed. So it's not like, uh, oh my God, you have to work, otherwise you just go away. I mean, everyone gives the contribution he or she can give. So uh, we we perfectly understand when it's not possible because you cannot cope with your life outside of Access the Animals. So... That's how we we are going on with the steam since I think 2014 already. So that's the only way. We are all old and we have to find a balance between our hobby, which is access the animals, and our real life. Yeah, I think finding that balance is important for any undertaking, like no matter what it is. It could be so easy to cut really fixated so I'm, I'm glad that everyone's mindful of that so I don't, I don't want you guys to burn out at any point yeah I, I when I was younger when we started uh, ATA I had a lot of moments in which I was like no I cannot take this, take this anymore because it was too much I put a lot of pressure on myself so at some point I had to step back and breathe for some days or weeks and and then go back to do, to do what I had to do for ATA. But I think that that's what um, taught me how to deal with Access the Animals, to, to consider it a, as a hobby, which is what it was what it, and what it is. And not as a, I don't know how to say it, but not as a, the most important thing that I had to do. I mean, I do what I can do in the time I have. And that's all I can give. And the same goes for everyone else in the team, of course. Well, you already mentioned this in your previous reply that you sometimes had difficulties balancing your professional life and, and home life and access the animus, all of these things together. But how much time would you estimate is dedicated to running the website each week? And what are the ways that you remind yourself to pull back if you can feel yourself getting overwhelmed? 
Uh, I wouldn't be able to give you uh, give you a number for the hours I dedicate to not just to the website but to the whole project. So to everything that mostly Marco needs me to do. Um, but I would tell you that in my free time, in the free time I have from work, at least half of it, if not more than half of it but yeah let's go with half of it it's dedicated to, to to what i have to do for access the animals and not, not only the the website actually the website is um the smallest part apart from when i have specific project like uh, the hizu uh, language hub or the calculator uh, or stuff like that which requires a lot of focus on that but the time i spend on access the animals Recently, it's more about social media, about graphic design for the pictures that goes out, for example, for the good giveaways or for announcements or for stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I would I will give you half of my free time uh, from job goes to 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 access the animals. About my balance between life and uh, and and ATA, I told you it's it was very difficult for me because I'm all um, I'm very passionate. So when I get into something, I tend to give all that I have to what I'm being passionate about. I really had to work on myself to define the limits. So when I feel that I'm becoming a bit too overwhelmed by what I'm doing, I just get my dog out for a walk. Uh, get away from home, music in my ears, and that's it. I, I have to just unplug, <laughs> I can say, from uh, from working from for ATA. And then when I come back, if I feel like uh, I start working again, otherwise I do not start working on ATA until I feel like, because otherwise I know that I burn out pretty, pretty fast because my job, my real life job is already very demanding and very challenging so sometimes when i have uh, challenges also when i come back from work uh, it becomes pretty difficult to manage everything so yeah i learned to just go away from everything and just relax for two two hours one or two hours and then come back and if i'm relaxed enough i go back to work otherwise i just wait for when i'm relaxed enough to work again yeah, that sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure it wasn't easy figuring that out. Absolutely not. No, because I uh, really, uh, I told you I'm very passionate about what I do. So for me, at the beginning, it especially was so difficult to just say, okay, I stop here. I cannot go on. I just tend to push myself to go on until I, I was really uh, burnt out. So I had to find a way. And, <laughs> and Dasha, of course, was my best way to solve all the problems in my life. So, <laughs> so access the animus is almost. Is it almost or over ten years old? It's nine year and some months now. Yeah. Okay. So almost ten years old at this point, yeah. and it's well one of, if not the biggest Assassin's Creed fan site out there. How did the site grow over time, and what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Like, were you surprised by? the the growth was it was it sudden or was it gradual did it surprise you the success of the site i would i, w I would tell you that i was so surprised especially at the beginning because we really wanted to start as an italian project we had no intent well we had the idea maybe in the future in the far future to translate every everything in english and stuff like that but at the beginning when after really two or three months we had people coming and asking for translation for our stuff well that was quite satisfying and it was surprising because really we weren't expecting such a an interest in our stuff at the beginning like that uh, so yeah, we had a very fast start if i can say and then I think we had a constant growth in in the years. Of course, there were moments in which we had a higher growth, maybe related to particular projects or uh, to part particular uh, content that we produced or stuff like that. But yeah, it was more constant after the first year of uh, of ATA. Uh, Nevertheless, I still am surprised sometimes when I see, when I look at our numbers, at our statistics and stuff like that, that we were actually able to, to reach that. 
some months ago the website reached 1 million views which is like <laughs> i would have never imagined that when i st when i created that also because this was personally one of my biggest challenges i've never studying studied coding for website or stuff like that so i was i learned all of that on the way so the first time i created the website for access the animals was very bad very bad um, being honest it was very bad the first version of the website was it really sucked and uh, that was the biggest challenge for me because no one else was working on the website so it depended on on me only so that was the biggest challenge for me personally speaking and uh, as a team i think our our biggest challenge is to be able and evolve with time because on uh, on the internet everything changes very fast so sometimes we tend to be stuck on uh, our old ways <laughs> in a way so we are i don't know we are still very attached to let's say facebook which is a uh, social media that is that is slowly dying and we are not really able for example to move to other social medias like tiktok or stuff like that because uh, you know, it's a bit difficult for for people like us, which are not old but are not young either, to evolve together with the the younger community that comes uh, with time. So yeah, I think that that's the biggest challenge we have to face. So we are at the beginning of this year. We we had like um, a meeting with all the the team members to like create. We we called it ATA Revolution because. <laughs> We had to we, we we had to think of ways to evolve uh, and to reach other parts of the community that we uh, were not reaching at the moment at, at the time, uh, and so we have like a, a plan for the, the next two years to create new channels in which uh, we want to to grow. So, for example, one of the future ones will be Discord, which is something we never created, but uh, we feel like it's something that would give us a better uh, involvement with the community. Uh, so yeah, I think these are the, the this is the biggest challenge we have to face also in the future. I can't wait for access the Animus Infinity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once we know what infinity is, well, maybe we can try and create something similar for access. <laughs> yeah. I just want to compliment you, sorry, because that's really incredible. Like you have an expertise and a craft in your professional life, and yet you went out and you picked up a lot of skills that really could be their own job by themselves. So I just want to say I'm I'm in awe of you. You are incredible. So I'm I'm really grateful <laughs> to know you. you. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, girls. <laughs> you embarrassed me. <laughs> like you said, you were nervous at the beginning of the interview, but so was I because, like you know, like Lori said, you you are incredible. <laughs> so it feels almost like being in the presence of some celebrity. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, <laughs> please, I'm 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 no one <laughs> really. I just enjoy what I do, and I know. I'm no one, really. <laughs> Listeners, she says that, but a lot of us who've been in the community for a long time know that Sari really is like the shadow boss of Axis the Animus, so she's being humble. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just because I'm the <laughs> wife of the boss, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do want to highlight some of your accomplishments. So, so I want to ask you what would you consider some of Axis the Animus's biggest accomplishments and is there one that you are particularly proud of? So I would say, uh, I speak for myself, of course, the other members may have different accomplishments, for, of course, but for me, they revolve, of course, around the website uh, for all the reasons I just said. Uh, so recently, the one I'm most proud of is for sure the his language lab uh, hub not only because i love the, the language but also because in terms of creating the website i put in it a, a lot of work and i had to learn a lot of stuff like for the translator for the re real-time translator or um, well for a lot of, of things that are inside of that 
I had to really put a lot of work on it. And if you think we started to work on that on September last year, or October maybe, and we released it in March. So there were like six months of work just on that. I mainly focused on that for six months. So, uh, and when we released it, it, it received such an amazing reaction from the community. The website statistics were like the highest I've seen in the last two or three years. So yeah, I think I was very, very proud about that. <laughs> I'm still very, very proud about that. And of course, when we when we released it, it was the moment when we reached the 1 million views on the website. So I it, I, I mean, I had two, two, two things that got me really happy in that moment, both the 1 million views and uh, the reception of the Easy Language Hub. So um, yeah, I think that at the moment, that's my most, yeah, the thing I'm most proud of uh, about my job for ATA. And then, of course, I another thing that gave me a big challenge to create, and that was an idea, Marcus, Marcus Ideas, uh, was uh, the Assassin's Creed calculator, uh, which forced me to use languages for uh, for the website that I've never used. So that was another challenge, a uh, really big challenge for that too. And actually, the more in general, if we do not consider the website only, my the the thing that makes me more proud of is to be still here after nine years of work. Uh, on ATA, so we had a lot of struggles, both in real life and in the team at some times, at some points, but we're still here. And that's something that makes me really proud because it means that we are still loved by our community. What we deliver is still appreciated. So yeah, that's that, that makes me really proud, yeah. Sorry, I said proud so many times, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for that. You have every reason to be proud. Uh, and I just I just want to explain to the audience who maybe not may not be familiar with the projects. Uh, Access the Animus pretty much cracked the EC language and learned how to translate it. And they created a translator on their website, which to me is just like mind blowing. And then the calculator is where it's it's pretty much you get to put in things that you like and it recommends other content you would enjoy. Is that correct, Sari? Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, you go there, you decide. It's a, it's a tool that helps you understand how you should uh, how you should face all the releases for the Assassin's Creed franchise in a chronological order. So you decide if you want to uh, you you decide if you want to play only the games, or if you want to play the games and read the books or the transmedia, or if you want to play DLCs or not. And you get a result at the end with all the titles that you have to to play or to read and it gives you back um, an average time you should need to do all of that so when you want to do like all the things so games dlcs books comic books uh, and uh, online games and stuff like that it i don't know it's like half a lifetime to finish all of them but yeah <laughs> you can do it if you want <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just really incredible. I, I'm just so blown away by the imagination that your team has and, and the dedication that you have. I think you have every right to be proud of your nine years of, of service, so to speak. Like I, I think a lot of fans out there, they really underestimate just how much work and dedication goes into running a project like this. Yeah, a lot of work for sure. Yeah, a lot of time, a lot of dedication. We're, we're especially curious about your ECU language project. Can you tell us more about how did that get started? Like, what was it like? What, what were some of the challenges that came up? Yeah, well, the ECU language started with, I mean, our involvement in the ECU language started when someone online realized that on the collector's edition box were, uh, there were some symbols that were not known. So there were strange symbols that seemed to be like to have some meaning, but no one got to know to understand what, what they were. So at some point, I remember Darby saying that to understand the collector's edition, we had to wait to reach a certain point in the game. If I remember correctly, it was after finding the, um, the Saga Stone. And when we realized that on uh, Leila's laptop, uh, we had the same symbols that were on the collector's edition. Well, 
there was the moment in which we had the same feeling we had for initiates when we had the riddles like the one for Galina when you had to uh, to write on a paper and then move the paper to to understand where you had to go the 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 good old days feeling we had back then and that of course hooked us up <laughs> so at that point we were fully focused on translating then and i remember i always tell everyone that asked me i remember at some point we were stuck we couldn't we couldn't manage to translate the sentence on the box so we decided to as i told you i'm um i really love riddles so i've always loved them since i was a, a kid uh, and riddle solving games like siberia so i learned uh in time that sometimes when you're stuck on a riddle you just have to uh get away from it look at the whole picture from afar so we decided okay let's stop thinking about that let's just write the sentence we cannot translate and we wrote it on some papers and we hung the papers around the house so uh, because we hoped for like i come back home i look at the paper and all of a sudden the epiphany comes to me but that didn't happen um so at some point we managed to translate it and we decided to create the two videos for the cracking of the language which had a huge reception from the community and from the press so we kind of got that we didn't think the community would have been so involved in this language but at the point we understood that that would have been the case at some months after we released the the videos and we managed to find the the treasure tied to to the collector's edition i won't say what it is in case anyone wants to find it himself after some months we we were asked to create a cheat sheet with the rules that we were able to uh, discover from the text that we had in the game and when we finished creating the cheat sheet, which, which was just a PDF, nothing special, after one or two months, we decided that an, a, an online hub would have been so cool with all the things that uh, we were able to get, both visuals, both uh, translators or the number, the, the number converters and all the videos we created about that. So yeah, we, we decided, okay, let's try and work on that and let's see if we can create something that can be appealing considering how much of a hot topic for the community the ISO language was and that's it that's how all the the idea that's how the idea came and <laughs> after six months of work of hard work we managed to to release it yeah i had completely forgotten about the collector's edition puzzle <laughs> like it was already, it was so complex. And I just remember like when you guys cracked it, I was just so impressed. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think really that was amazing. It's one of the, the fondest memories of, I have about Valhalla because Marco and I really spent so many hours on that. But not just because we had to do it for ATA, but because we had so much fun. It was really the feeling of initiates, really the feeling of having to work your way to understand the mystery uh, that was missing from the games since a lot of time, I think. So when we managed to get to the end of the reader, it was like an epiphany. I was so happy. <laughs> I was so tired, but so happy. Yeah, like, I, I can't remember how you guys figured it out, but there's like a whole involved thing. Like, you have to hit a rock at the precise yeah. moment the sun goes down and it's yeah it's because just there so... were there were a lot of hints in the collector's edition so you had like the the three pictures you know the the, the arts for from the collector's edition that if you move them one over the other you have a picture of the sun going away <laughs> so that was the sunset and when you moved the, the cards, you had a word in Izu that said now. So when the sun goes away, it's now. So at this moment, you have to do something else. And the, the hints for what you had to do were on the collector's edition. So <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Amazing. Even with all those hints, I never would have gotten it. <laughs> it's just incredible. Well, at some point, we had a lot of help from other people from the community because it became like a very hot topic 
And so, like, we had a fan that uh, translated, you know, on the steel, steel box of the collector's, collector's edition, there were numbers. Uh, and you had to use them as a grid to find a, a specific place. And we couldn't understand that. So we had this fan helping us. And uh, that, that grid draw the, the shape of the lake in which you had to go to find the, the rock. So, yeah, it was... It was a nice community effort, I would say, yeah. So since you mentioned uh, developing the language translator, uh, did you have a background in linguistics that contributed to your interest in the project? I don't have a very specific background. What I have is that I, uh, in my high school, I, I studied Latin, which is pretty common actually in Italy, so it's not such a strange thing to happen uh, and at the time when I was in high school I was always complaining with Marco because we were like uh, we were sitting at the same desk when we were in high school and I was always complaining like when in life will Leiting help me in anything and when, when we were translating the, the language we were like he was telling me see <laughs> Leiting is useful at some point in life because we managed to see a lot of similarities between the, the Yuzu language and the Latin one. And so, yeah, this is my only real linguistic background. Apparently, when I was in high school, I studied, studied Latin pretty well, even if I didn't realize it until I had to use it for, for the Yuzu language. But yeah, no, not, not, I have no specific backgrounds. I mean, I never studied French, I never studied, I studied a bit of Spanish, but never really used it, and I forgot all of that. Uh, so my only background is I speak Italian, I speak English, and I, by chance, studied, studied Latin when I was in high school. I just gotta say, that's adorable. <laughs> Just imagining you guys not only sitting in high school together, <laughs> like two young lovebirds. Yeah, yeah, he was my. But, but also yeah, that, that whole was my he, anecdote about Latin and everything. <laughs> we were at the same desk. He was like the nerd, and I stole all of, all of his homeworks. Yeah, at high school, we were like that. Yeah. It's <laughs> adorable. Yeah, a long time story. With so many accomplishments under your belt, what are some of your goals for the future of Access the Animus? You already kind of brought up the idea that you guys have some things in the works, but can you maybe expand on them, or is that something for the future? Well, as I told you before, our goal is to be able and evolve. So to be able and reach the new community, the new, the younger community. So we are working in the background to be able and do that. As I told you, the what we will likely release the sooner is the Discord server, which is almost ready, uh, because I have never really worked on Discord, so I had to learn how to manage the servers. It's almost ready, so that will be the first the first thing. And of course, we are trying to create other other stuff, but uh, as I said before, life is already very demanding, so at some point we will uh, need for our help. So we will need for other people maybe uh, helping us maybe with some expertise that we don't have. Um, let's say that's, that's the, the plan we have for the future. The thing is that for us being... It has always been like this. Uh, we are very slow, so when we, when we decide to create something new, it takes a lot of time for us to actually put it into works. So we decide, okay, we do this, but before it's ready, it takes a lot of time. So uh, we are a slow car. <laughs> we have to to uh, to take our time to to do it as we like it to be. So we just don't want to let's say, okay, we create a server, the the server go and use it. We want it to be the way we want it to be. We want it to have the, the things we want to have. So yeah, we're always very, very slow in what we do. But yeah, the, the main goal is to evolve, to become more reachable in a way, to become more involved with the community. So we have always been a bit... Uh, we have always had a very big community, but it's very recent that we get involved with it. So we used to, like, let's say, 
post some news on on uh, on our social media or post the the article on the website and we receive maybe a lot of comments and stuff like that but it's not like we interacted with the community a lot that's something we are trying to change so the discord server will have that focus so we want to be closer with our community to get to know our community, which we started to do with the streams, which is something new for us that we started at the beginning of this year to be, even in this case, uh, to, to talk with them, to actually interact with their comments while we play, let us be mocked when we die, like, <laughs> like I always die whenever I play. So we want to be more friendly, more reachable in a way. So let's say that for this year, the focuses are the focus is this, so to, to be more involved with the community and the future, the future years, we will see <laughs> so far. But there are, there are a lot of things that we are working on in the background. It's actually pretty interesting since you guys are almost 10 years old at this point to kind of see the evolution of social media and how people interact with each other in real time through your website. Like you mentioned, you know, it used to be Facebook and now it's TikTok yeah, and, it's so... and now you have Discord and, and people want to see instant reactions and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, it's so different. When we started, like Facebook was the thing. Uh, so we started with Facebook because it was the social media and it slowly got almost dead. I mean, uh, when we when we compare our engagement from the posts we do on Facebook or on Twitter, well, there is no comparison. It's really Facebook is gives almost no engagement. Well, not no engagement, but very low engagement, while Twitter is constantly growing. So this is the reason why we really need to look around to grow up in a way to uh, or grow younger, I don't know, <laughs> uh, to, to be able and reach what's trending now. Because, I mean, this, these projects like our or ours or other projects live on social media engagement, on social media activities, uh, on content that you publish on your website, but then get pushed on social media and stuff like that. So it's really important to follow the, the flow. I look forward to access the animus TikToks with you and Marco. Like <laughs> access the animus challenges. Yeah, I will tell you that's the the thing that gets me nervous the most because, but as I told you, I just don't want to go and say, okay, this is my TikTok, our TikTok account. Just come. I mean, I want to have a vision on that. I want to. We want to have like a an objective for that social media. As as I told you, the Discord account server will be to be more involved with the community, to share more of ourselves with the community. So TikTok has to have a, a goal and we still have to to understand what that will be. So, <laughs> so yeah, I told you, we are a slow car. You, you say you're a slow car, but I think what's really amazing and you don't even realize it, is you go into every project thinking about your brand and your identity and your strategy, which I think is something that a lot of content creators kind of miss like they kind of go in and they want to make content as quickly as possible but if you don't think about your brand and what you want to accomplish with this medium you can get lost really easily so i wouldn't berate yourself for going in strategically i think that's actually really smart yeah we had sometimes in the past we had this idea of having a forum uh, back in the days when forum were still a thing for collectibles to have people coming and talking about collectibles and stuff like that but we never really uh, thought um, in depth about that so we launched it and it wasn't a success and it was so disappointing because we as, as usual we put a lot of work on that and then it never really worked so we had to to leave it there and close it so that's something that taught us to really think at what we are trying to achieve with what we are creating and to create it if it's worth if we cannot give any something that it's worth with a new social media with a new project with with something new it's it's not worth wasting both our time which is already not so much 
and the resources because sometimes this stuff also requires economical uh, investment not big economical investment but however uh, some economical investment so we we decided to be more grounded and to think thoughtfully about what we want to achieve with new stuff that's really great insight thanks for sharing that story just hearing some of the stories about the numbers that you're reaching it's it's pretty clear that access the animus is doing quite well which is especially impressive for a project that's been running for so long but i just i just want to kind of end our interview on just getting a little more insight into you so what would you say personally motivates you to keep going and how do you personally measure success so i would say I still love a lot of, of stuff that's in Assassin's Creed. There are things that I'm not enjoying as a big part of the community, but there are still a lot of things that I love. So, for example, in the last year, as I told you, the, the Yuzu language gave me a big boost in working for ATA. And, um, I mean, Avalala rekindled a bit uh, the, the, the fire that was a bit... That got a bit colder with Odyssey. So there are moments in which you just say, "Why? Why are we doing this?" I mean, sometimes it's difficult. Not just because maybe you don't like something, or maybe you are not sharing the same vision of the developers or stuff like that. But also when things happen outside of the game, or when you, I don't know, we all know about the things that happen in Ubisoft about women about all the things that i mean they're pretty known at this point so sometimes you just feel a bit um dry uh when this stuff happens uh and also because sometimes life just takes a big toll on you so outside of ata i mean real life takes a big toll on you and so sometimes you just think well i cannot take it to go back and work in ata but actually, when uh, the moment in which you are so weak, maybe, or so uh, tired and stuff like that, there is always something that I can find in Assassin's Creed, not just for the games, but also as the community, that lighten your day up sometimes. So sometimes you just go home, you're, you're so nervous or angry because at, at, at work something happened or in your life something happened, and you just go online and talk to someone that you met because of Assassin's Creed. And I mean, it's the, the, the other big thing of Assassin's Creed is that the community is amazing. I mean, apart from, of course, every community has its own black sheep, if you want, in a, in a way. But the community I know and I share time with, it's amazing. So I've met so many people, thanks to Assassin's Creed, that are now big parts of my life like for example Sebastian Memento Gallery uh, or Stefania herself I mean there are so many people uh, that I've known for that and I think that helps a lot uh, when I think I cannot take it anymore and then Assassin's Creed I, I, I've told you I've I have Assassin's Creed in my life since 2007 so it's a constant in our life, my market. So it, it w at this point, I think it would feel strange not to have it. Uh, even if sometimes you don't, you're not satisfied with what you're seeing, but it would feel strange not to have it. Oh yeah, the second part was to how to measure, uh, how I measure success. Um, the easy answer would be that I look at the numbers and the numbers are constantly constantly growing and reaching peaks that I would have never imagined. But I tell you that for me, the success is that I still see people that enjoy what we do. I still see people coming and um, commenting under our content and asking for more or stuff like that. And that's what gives me the the measure of the success we have that's very recent sometimes we we are having third parts coming to us to like create content for the community for example in the last days we had this giveaway for the chair uh, of the 15 year anniversary and we had this contact with the, the the company that asked us to create this giveaway for the community and 
I mean, these are very small things, but it's satisfying when you see that you are reliable enough to, to have people coming to you and asking for help in creating stuff for, for, for the community. Like, for example, at conventions, when, it, when we had the chance to collaborate with Ubisoft for the community dinners or for the trivias and stuff like that, it's... I think that that are the, the the parts that at least for me are more uh, are the ones that gives me the feeling of the success, if we want to call it success, that we are having. I think that's really great. I I've heard about the famous quizzes that used to happen at Gamescom that ETA would put on, and it always looked like a lot of fun. So I hope you guys get to do that again in the future. Yeah, let's hope that we, when COVID l leave us alone, <laughs> we can go back to real life conventions and we can create stuff like that because it was amazing. Well, I think that the best one was the community dinner with fans and developers sitting at the Satan table, sharing a meal together, talking about Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I really hope that we will be able to go back and organize stuff like that again. Yeah, the community dinners and the quizzes, that's really something that I associate you guys with because it's so communal and you guys have always been about serving the community. Uh, I, I miss those as yeah, well. Yeah, I miss them so much. So much. Yeah, also because the, the conventions are the only moment in which you give a face sometime to the people you're talking with online. I've, I've I really, like, for example, Azu, which is collaborating with us sometime, I've met him at Gamescom, like, to, I, I think it was the last Gamescom, and it was so nice to give a face to one of the fans that was, like, commenting under our content so much, and that's something I'm, I'm really missing. I mean, the, the community feeling that convention give is something that, if you have never been there, you cannot understand that. You cannot really understand what it means. So yeah, let's hope, maybe next year. I'm sure that we could talk to you all day about Assassin's Creed and access the Animus and everything, but I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Oh, that, that's fine. Thank you so much for having me. It was really a Thank nice you. chat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Your work is obviously very impressive at Access the Animus, and you have so much to be proud of. So I really hope you guys will still be around for another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we are going to be old and using a stick to walk, maybe we'll give up. <laughs> so thank you once again, and thank you, Laurie, as well. Happy to be here. Join us again next time on AC Sisterhood Speaks, and have a good week, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye.